Hi, uh, a very good morning to all our listeners. My name is Amit Malhotra. Uh, I'm the Regional Director for South Asia and Africa at La Trobe University. I'm delighted to uh, connect with all of you today uh, through this uh, Facebook Live, uh, taking this opportunity to share with you information about La Trobe University. I'd like to also tell you about the uh, current situation in Australia and also some of the key initiatives that La Trobe has taken to support uh, students who are looking at studying in Australia at La Trobe University. So let me now, first of all, start with, with uh, giving you a very, very uh, quick update about La Trobe in terms of information about La Trobe. So La Trobe University uh, is the third oldest university in the state of Victoria. And we were formed in the year 1964, but our first batch of students commenced in 1967. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is that it gives you an idea that uh, La Trobe as an institution is more than 50 years old. Well, La Trobe, like any other organization, uh, institution has got a very strong vision uh, and a strategic plan in place. Uh, the four key pillars of our strategy are, number one, an outstanding student experience, making sure that any student who's coming down to La Trobe University or enrolling with La Trobe University is getting the best experience, which is educational experience, uh, their, their learning experience, and they turn out to be successful in future. Number two is graduate employability. La Trobe has got a very, very strong vision when it comes down to supporting students with employability and making sure that they're getting the best jobs uh, or if they're joining back the businesses or starting the businesses, they're successful there and are able to run them successfully. So what we've been doing uh, very, very well is that each and every program of ours uh, that we offer to international students have got inbuilt uh, industry uh, engagement programs like we do internships, uh, cadetships. Uh, we, we run industry projects in terms of giving students the opportunity of doing industry projects, which are real-time projects. Also what we do it is that we bring a, uh, industry to the classroom uh, where the students are able to learn from the experts as also they're able to build the networks. Also what we do it is that we organize a lot of events at the uh, campus at, for the students uh, where the students are able to showcase their, their uh, skills and the work that they've done in, in the qualification. So we do that employment fairs, we do the particular uh, discipline specific showcase and they are done very, very regularly. And also what we've done it is that we've started with a fabulous service called the Career Ready Advantage, uh, where we are uh, training our students on becoming job ready and connecting them to, to the industry also using even uh, a third party, which is a recruitment firm called the Unitems, which connects our graduates to the industry. So a lot of initiatives have been taken and I'll tell you how well we have also done because of that reason just on the, uh, you know, in the next few minutes. Third one for us is a research excellence. La Troupe is a, a research and a teaching based university. We are a leading research university with a very strong vision and work around, on, around the research. So on a campus, for example, we've got over 30 research centers. Each of them are doing a lot of research. They, each of them are about 100 to $500 million investment connected to more than 150, 200 companies, each of them. So what happens with this is because of a strong research, uh, our academics are doing work, which is something uh, that is going on in the industry. They are looking at solutions to the current problems that the world is facing, and they bring that knowledge to the classroom to teach you and share with you. Also, because of the industry connections, they try to connect you as students with the industry, where you can learn from industry and build your connections and opportunities for yourself in the future. And the fourth pillar for us is that we want to be seen ourselves as a partner of choice by the industry and by the community. So La Trobe continues to put more effort to strengthen its connection with the community as well as with the industry also. And then as a community, I'm also talking to you about our students. We love to have more and more students coming uh, and studying uh, with us. In fact, I would like to say that uh, the we, we see a lot of interest coming in from Bangladesh. We attract a lot of students coming and studying with us. And uh, they've been extremely, extremely uh, happy and doing quite well, uh, whether they're based in Australia or they've come back to Bangladesh and now they're working in Bangladesh. In terms of La Trobe, we have got a very, very strong reputation uh, and rankings globally. 
So if I first started, maybe just the Asia Pacific region, we are ranked in the top 50 in, in, that, in the region. But if I talk about globally, we are ranked in the top 300, putting us in the top 1.1% uh, universities of the world. We, if I, if I indicate to you about the particular disciplines, there are a lot of disciplines for which we are ranked in the top 50, top 100, top 150, or top 200. So, for example, for sports, we are in the top 50. Uh, for example, if we talk about accounting, finance, uh, if I talk about psychology, philosophy, hospitality, tourism, and many other uh, business analytics, we are ranked either in the top 100, top 200 in, in the world. So, we're doing extremely well. And I am quite pleased to tell you that because of that effort and the focus of uh, university about graduate employability, globally, we are ranked among the top 150 in the world. So uh, there are over 28,000 universities and we are among the top 150 when it comes down to the graduate employability. Uh, we, we run about 250 plus courses in the area of business, engineering, IT, health, humanities, education. So we've got a whole range of offerings uh, and we offer them at the undergrad, postgraduate research uh, level. In fact, we get a lot of students coming in who have done HSEB from, from Bangladesh, or they're doing the uh, A-level examination, the Cambridge A-level, or IB board. So we do get a lot of students coming down, and we do recognize the qualification from Bangladesh from section one and two universities. So we do get a lot of students coming from these. And, uh, but if I talk overall, we have got over 8,000 students, and they're from more than 100 different countries. We, we've got a very, very uh, good multicultural environment on the campus as well. Uh, in terms of our location, if you look at this slide on the top right hand side of the uh, slide, you can see the state uh, of Victoria highlighted in red. Uh, so that is where we are located and we have got multiple locations. So if you look at the map underneath that, that's the map of Victoria. And we've got location in uh, Melbourne, for example, we've got uh, two campuses in Melbourne. One is in the CBD, the other one is in a place called Bandura. It's a suburb, not too far from the CBD, but that's the largest metropolitan campus of Australia. We do have regional presence also. We know there's a lot of interest coming in for regional, and we do have presence in the regional Victoria. They have presence in, in Bendigo, Shepparton, Albury, Pijonga, and Mildura City. So we do have a presence across uh, Victoria. What you see now on your screen is the uh, aerial view of our Melbourne campus, uh, which I mentioned to you is in Bandura. It is a beautiful campus, great facilities. We've got pretty much everything what a student is looking for. Uh, the state of our lab facilities, uh, beautiful uh, lecture rooms, a massive library, great a lot of cafeterias on the campus. Uh, we've got beautiful mosque on the campus, which, is, which was set up in 2010. Uh, we've got a lot of accommodation. Uh, a lot of parents sometimes ask us that is, is getting a halal food challenging on the campus? And the answer is not at all. In fact, not only on the campus, but it's so easy to get that in Australia and Melbourne. But we, yes, uh, almost all our cafes on the campus actually offer halal food. So uh, it, it's a great place to come down uh, and study. Uh, we all, like I indicated, we do have regional campuses also. And amongst the regional, the most popular one is the Bendigo. The reason being that Bendigo is just about 150 kilometers away from Melbourne. What you're seeing on your screen uh, are pictures of uh, Bendigo City. The reason why I'm showing you this is to just to tell you that Bendigo, when you say it's a regional city, it's not ruler. By regional, what we mean is that uh, it, it is uh, a city which has got low population. That's how it has been defined. Uh, but if you look at here, it has got a beautiful infrastructure, whether you talk about high-rise buildings, you talk about restaurants, you uh, talk about the industries, it has got a lot of industries. So it's a, it's a great city to come and study. Now, like I mentioned to you, it's just about 150 kilometers away, but uh, like I indicated, it has got a lot of industries. Uh, like for example, it is known for its financial uh, industry, uh, the uh, headquarters of Adelaide Bank and Benjigo Bank, for example, are in Benjigo. It has got a huge set of a Benjigo hospital there. In 1862, uh, Bendigo was, was termed as the gold mine city. So there are a lot of mining and engineering based firms also in, in uh, Bendigo. In fact, it is also known as a city of gastronomy. So there are a lot of food processing uh, uh, setups there as well as the wine processing uh, centers also. Uh, so there has got a lot of wineries and it, it's got a big industry in terms of when I talk about, I'm saying this is because when people are thinking or students are thinking about part-time jobs or full-time jobs, there's no dearth of it. There are a lot of, lot of opportunities available for, for the students to, to work, whether it's engineering, business, IT. 
like I said, it's a gold mine city, a lot of tourism, a lot of tourism happens, a lot of people come down to experience gold mines. So the opportunities are equally good in Bendigo also. That's some of the pictures of our Bendigo campus, beautiful Bendigo campus, 80 acres big, great facilities, great engineering facilities. Uh, again, a lot of sporting facilities. You can see on the screen, there's a sport ground. Uh, it's an early morning picture having uh, kangaroos on it, uh, but it, it's great uh, campus to be in. We've got about 5,000 uh, plus students there, but uh, our focus in terms of engagement with the industry is equally good in Bendigo also. It's, it's nowhere uh, lesser. We have got a lot of industry partners. Uh, what I've done it is on this slide, I've put some of the logos of some of our industry partners. So we've got a lot of industry partners making sure that our students are getting internship uh, opportunities, uh, as well as the full-time job opportunities also once, once they finish the courses. So uh, for example, you can see we, have, we put it here, Bendigo Bank, Bendigo Telco, and many more. So there are a lot of companies there uh, with whom our students are going for internships and working there as well. Like I indicated before, we've got a whole range of courses uh, based on demand of, of, from the industry. So we've run courses in business, engineering, IT, uh, health, we run courses in humanities. So we've got a whole wide range of courses that we run and we're bringing in more courses, seeing uh, the increasing in demand. So Emma, Master Information Technology, Professional Accounting, Accounting and Financial Management, many more. So we're bringing in more courses Recently, we've also introduced the Masters of uh, Information Communication Technology there because the IT hub is IT jobs are increasing in Bendigo as well. Well, that's that's a brief introduction on Latrobe, but let me now tell you more importantly about some of the key initiatives that uh, Latrobe has taken during this uh, tough situation of COVID-19. Uh, it's a challenging situation. Uh, we know that at the moment that uh, the international travel is not possible because almost the international borders are closed. And it might take a few more months for uh, most of the countries to recover. Uh, these, these countries in subcontinent, we all are facing a lot of problem at the moment. So uh, the, the best way at this stage, what we see is that uh, if you can't travel overseas uh, straight away, you have the option of starting your studies online. So you can start studying online, uh, but as soon as the borders open up, you can come down to Australia. So what we're doing it is that we're giving that option to the students. Now, what, what we've done it is keeping that in mind, we have taken three key initiatives. One is that we've brought in more start dates to our programs. So we've introduced more intakes. Number two, uh, we've been, we have expanded our scholarship offerings. So we've got more scholarships available to support students at this tough time. And third, we've brought in some flexibility uh, for uh, in terms of the admission processes. So starting the first point, what we've done it is that we have brought in more start dates and on an easy basis, keeping the load of study lesser. So traditionally, if we look at the screen, our courses in the second half of the year only start in uh, July and November. But for the convenience of the student now, we are running our courses on term structure with three start dates. So we're starting our courses in July. We're starting our courses in September and we're starting our courses in November. And instead of students picking up the full semester, full uh, four subjects at a time, what they can do it is they can divide the semester into two terms. So what happens in that case is that instead of picking up four subjects, they pick up two subjects. And these two subjects are offered in the period of six weeks. So six weeks, they finish up two subjects for the examination, and then they've got an exit point. So for example, they say, listen, I've done two subjects online. Now I'd like to go to Australia and continue my studies. They can take they can break down there and then move down to, to the next week. They can take a break. Uh, but if they say, I'll be more than happy to do a full semester uh, online, they can do that also by doing two terms. So like I said, there are multiple entry points now and multiple options of uh, sort of moving down to Australia as soon as the borders open up. So a lot more flexibility when it comes down to, to moving, uh, to doing uh, courses in shorter duration. It also means that the study, lo uh, the study load on them at a time is lesser and it's also that they have to not pay the full semester fee upfront, they can pay on term basis. So that way it makes it easier. We are starting our terms uh, from the uh, July, which is starts on the 20th of July. Uh, then we have got a start date in September, which starts on the 7th September. And then we have got a third uh, of a start date, which is in November, commencing from the 2nd November. 
Now, most of our courses, which are popular in Bangladesh, should be offered on the term structure. And uh, so what we've done it is, I won't go through the whole list, but most, uh, pretty much all our business courses are getting offered on term structure, uh, where the student uh, can, like I said, do two subjects at a time. If you look at this list, uh, you'll see only MBA missing here. So in, just the except MBA, uh, we are offering all our courses online on term structure. But that doesn't mean that MBA would not be offered online. MBA will be offered online, but on semester basis. So any program which is not on this particular list will be offered on a semester basis. Similarly, now goes the uh, our courses offered by School of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, which includes the School of IT. We're pretty much running uh, undergrad and postgraduate courses again on the term structure. All of our courses under this school. Uh, you can see here that the Bachelor of Engineering is missing, for example. So that means that engineering will be offered on semester basis but definitely online. Similarly, the school, uh, the school of uh, the psychology and public health as well as School of Molecular Sciences offering courses on term structure online. So we're doing all the courses online. And just for your information, when I say online, I meant digital education, not distance education. So you will have your proper classes, you will have your lectures, you will have your interaction with the academics, uh, you will have access to the university facilities, uh, you will have uh, interaction with the fellow students, you will have examination, uh, you will have one-on-one -on -one interaction with academics. There is no difference technically in your experience. The only difference is that you're not sitting in the classroom, but you're sitting in a digital classroom or a, uh, in a virtual classroom. So that's the only difference. So your engagement is still the same when it comes down to your fellow students and with your academics. And what we have also done it is that we have uh, put brought in a lot of more changes to the timetable as well. So what is happening is that we'll be running most of our classes during the afternoon time, Australia, uh, which will be the morning time in uh, Bangladesh, making it easier uh, for the students to attend the classes. So they don't have to get up in the morning at four o'clock or five o'clock to attend the classes. They can easily do the classes during their morning hours, nine, 10. So we've brought in that flexibility also. Scholarships that I, I know that's always an important factor. And I think I'm quite excited to share with you about scholarships. So we brought in uh, two scholarships. Uh, what we've done it is like I said, that we have revitalized and expanded our scholarship offering, making it easier for our students in Bangladesh. So what we've done it is the first one is called the, uh, the Latrobe South Asia Scholarship, where what we're doing it is that any stu student from Bangladesh who's got a citizenship of Bangladesh should be entitled to apply for the scholarship. And there are three slabs of the scholarship. So make it very, very easy. If you, you're scoring uh, uh, between 55 to 70, you get entitled for a 20% scholarship. And that's across the duration of the program. Uh, if you get scored above between 70 to 75, you get entitled for a 25% scholarship. And if you have above 75 percent, you get entitled for a 30 percent scholarship. And then, like I said, it's across the entire duration of the program. And similarly, if you're coming down to do your undergraduate, oh, sorry, my apology, the post-graduation, you can see here, our marking scheme are quite easy. So you're starting with just a CGPA of 2.4, and that's a conversion formulas. Don't need to make notes of it. I'll share this presentation. Uh, it's on the FSB. You can watch it again, or you can ask for a copy of it from, from IDP as well. But it's quite easy making sure that pretty much every student get entitled for uh, the scholarship who's done reasonably well in, in Bangladesh. Similarly goes with the uh, students coming down for the undergraduation, uh, starting with, this, with the scoring of a four uh, in the HSZB. I understand that exams are at the moment getting postponed, but hope they come through, they happen soon. And as soon as your exams are done, you got your results, you can start. But just for information, uh, starting with the four, four to 4.3 is a 20%, 4.312, 4.79 scorers would get 25%, and 4.8 and above would get a 30% scholarship. So like I said, it's much, much easier for now the students to get the scholarship. The second one, the second scholarship that we introduced is called the Early Bird Acceptance Grant. Any student who's accepting their offer at least four weeks prior to the course start date would get entitled uh, for uh, the extra 5% discount on the tuition fee of the first year. So first year tuition fee would get discounted by 5%. So what I meant is that, for example, a student starting the course on 7th September, September intake. Now, four weeks prior to that is 10th of August. So if you're accepting your offer before 10th of August, you get entitled for an extra 5% uh, discount on the first year tuition fee. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, somebody gets 30% scholarship. 
So uh, in that case, uh, with the, which is South Asia scholarship, and they get a 5% scholarship, which is the early bird acceptance grant. So the first year, they're getting 35% scholarship. Second year, they get 30% scholarship. So you're saving something like close to about $13,000, $14,000 in the first year, and you're saving about eleven dollars to $12,000 in the second year, which is, I think, a huge saving. You're saving a lot of, lot of tuition fee uh, or your cost uh, of studies. And like I said, that, that fees continue, that the scholarship continues even when you come down to Australia. That's for the entire duration of the program. So you don't have to worry about that. And this scholarship will continue to offer in the future also. So in the future years, you will see the scholarship getting offered. Third one, what we've done is that uh, we've brought in flexibility with our admission processes. Number one is that if in case your board, your university uh, is taking a uh, sort of a bit longer, I know you will have to wait before you get your results and start your studies. But if in case your university, your board has decided to uh, cancel the examination, they're no more conducting the final examination and keep passing you on the basis of predicted results based on your past performance, we'll be very happy to honor that. So we'll, we'll accept the predicted results as well. The, your university is giving you the final qualification. Number two, what we have also done it is that we have started accepting more English language exams. So the UK, uh, the IELTS UKVI is acceptable by us. TOEFL Home Edition is getting accepted by us. Uh, IELTS Indicator is now also getting accepted by us. So we're giving a lot more options to students that they could take these exams and even start the degrees with us. All right, one of the very important factors that I'd like to share with you. So uh, the refund policy now. I know that a lot of students, when they are thinking about online, they're always nervous about what if I start and things don't go well for me, do I lose my money? And I'd like to tell you and give you an assurance that what we've done it is that we have made a very, very flexible refund policy. What we're saying is that you start online. If in the first 10 days you decide that you don't want to continue and you'd like to withdraw, you get your full money back. And what we give you the option is that you can ask us for a full withdrawal uh, in terms of refund of the money, or you can also tell us that you like to defer your admission and maybe credit that money into your next semester, where they issue you the deferred COE or the deferred admission letter, putting that money for the future. It's up to you. You tell us to transfer the money back to your account, we're more than happy to do it. The other concern is, what if I start my degree, do my two subjects, four subjects online, and uh, things sort of uh, don't go well when it comes down to visa, I get my visa rejection. Now, what will happen then? Will I lose my money? And the answer is no, you won't. It's not your fault if you get a visa rejection. So what we'll do it in that case is we'll give you a full refund. And we'll also give you a transcript for the two or four subjects that you've done. So you get those transcripts, you get that subjects done, and you do not have to worry about your fee getting lost. You get your money back. So. Uh, will give all that benefit. So our key objective is to make sure that we are looking after the well-being of students. We are making sure that you're not getting disadvantaged by any means at all. Very quickly, I won't get into this too detailed, but uh, the best is to refer to the Department of Home Affairs website. But what we are saying here is that if a student starts online, undergrad students, not to worry. You've got enough time. You're coming in for three-year degree or a four-year degree. The rule says you only have to study for two years to get your post-study work, right? So that's, that's fair enough. Uh, but if students are coming for post-graduation and they do two to four subjects online, uh, we still make sure that the remaining subjects are spread across two years or uh, the four semesters, making sure that your post study work rates are not impacted. So we will not uh, let you get disadvantaged by that mean also. And also, I'd like to tell you that yesterday there was a news in Australia that the government is also looking at recognizing the online education when it comes down to post study work rights. So we'll wait for the update from the, from the government. But definitely, meanwhile, I'd like to tell you that Latrobe has already decided that we'll make sure that the students are not getting disadvantaged for this. So that was a, a brief uh, information in terms of our uh, scholarship offering, our ranking, our reputation, our, our location, our plans for, for the COVID-19. Uh, and I'd also like to tell you that what we're doing is that tomorrow, uh, we are also doing one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction. Maybe where I will be very happy to talk to you in person, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and tell you more about all the information I share. And also, I'll be very happy to tell you about your courses that you're interested in, so that you can hear more about the courses that you're looking for. So uh, that's the update from my side. Uh, I hope you found this session and information useful. And uh, I wish you all the best. I look forward to interacting with you.
uh, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. Look after yourself and your families also.